Hi, John. My name's Scott. Hi, Scott. Hi. So um, I just want to see if you could put into a biblical context the difference between a Christian uh, with self-defense, like say someone was breaking into their house and you have a duty to protect your family, versus say how Peter was rebuked in the garden for having the sword and uh, he told him to put away the sword because whoever lives by the sword will die by the sword. So maybe the personal self-defense versus mm. persecution of the government or law enforcement uh, if they were to become in this country like we're seeing in other countries of the yeah. heavily persecuted. Yeah, really good question, Scott. You remember the Lord, uh, when He sent out uh, His followers, told them they, they needed to take a weapon. They needed to take a weapon. Um, and you might say, well, that was to defend themselves against an, an animal attack, but um, not just that. I, I believe that self-defense is a built-in mechanism in, in the human life, and I believe that, that human life is created in the image of God and therefore is valuable, and the reason that God institutes capital punishment for murder is because it is a violation of the creation which is in His image. Amen. I think we have a right to defend ourselves. I, I, the Lord was clearly saying to His followers that you may be in a situation where you will have to defend your own life. Um, uh, on the other hand, you, you also have Jesus saying, uh, if somebody hits you on the right cheek, turn the left cheek. If somebody takes your one, one piece of your clothing, give them another piece of your clothing. Um, that, that's a very fine line to walk. Um, I, I think we have, to, we have to look at it uh, on a sort of case-by-case -case basis. If somebody comes into my life and, uh, and they mistreat me, um, I'm not going to necessarily attack them. Um, I may take that mistreatment. I may turn my other cheek and let them mistreat me again and humbly accept that as something the Lord is allowing for the moment. But if somebody shows up at my house with a gun and wants to kidnap my children, that takes on a completely different character. In fact, that, that happened uh, at our house. Um, uh, Patricia and I were home, and a guy came with a knife uh, wanting to take one of the children. And, uh, you know, I never, I, it never came to a point where I had to do anything, but um, I played a lot of baseball when I was young, and so I got the largest 36-inch <laughs> bat I could find, and I stood behind the front door with it in my hand, ready to do what I needed to do to defend my family, because I think that's, that's part of, of the responsibility of a father to defend his own children. Self-defense is it's a built-in mechanism. We have, we have apparatus in our own, in our own design by God that is, that is defensive. We, we have ways to deflect and defense our, uh, defend ourselves against certain things that are, we have an antibody system in us. We, our eyes blink to protect our eyes. We, we naturally react in a protective way. Self-preservation is built into what it is to be human, and it's kind of um, intensified when you're the leader of a family or you're responsible for other people. So I think if you follow that far enough, I, I did a series of messages on war, the Christian and war. I, I think God has ordained the fact that not only are we to protect those over whom we have responsible care but as, a, as an individual or as a family, but I believe even on a national level. The people in authority have a sword, and they, had, they don't have that sword for nothing, and they don't have that sword to spank people. They have that sword as a terminal weapon if they need to use it. But it always would be used in a defensive way. In other words, the only just war is a defensive war, not, not a conquering war, not where you, you decide, well, we're going to go conquer this nation, we're going to march, and we're going to kill all these people and take over their land and their assets and all of that. That is an unjust war. but. I, I think there's no issue biblically in a just war in saying that the innocent people are being attacked and killed, and we need to step in and defend them against those kinds of unrighteous assaults. Just on a national level in, in our own country, America has always, uh, through its history, done that. We've always seen our country as kind of a, a global power to restrain evil around the world. You have to have restraint of evil in your own life. You have to re have restraint of evil in your family. You have to have it in your city. You have to have it in your state. You have to have it in your nation. That's why there are police, National Guard, and, and various forces uh, 
all the way down to those that do investigations and things like that, because evil will run wild unless it is restrained and God gives government a sword. But also the world as well has to be policed. And uh, for many, many years God raised up America to be, in a sense, the defender of all those who were under assault. That has uh, disappeared in recent years uh, in America. We, we no longer feel we need to play that role. And consequently, you have something happening, for example, uh, in the Middle East where you have 10 um, well, you have 10 million people displaced in Syria. You have a million people now, refugees out of Syria, and half a million dead bodies around Syria, and people sitting around saying, should we do anything? Well, that has happened because we have decided that we don't have any responsibility to protect innocent people. So we've stepped out of that role. We can only hope that somebody else, somebody else with some sense of honor and right and wrong could step in to be a protector in the world, um, or all hell will just continue to break loose at the level it's at now. And with the power of weapons, the destruction is just incalculable. So on the one hand, on a personal level, I don't want to defend those people who criticize me or uh, def defend myself against those people who might... Uh, take advantage of me like they take my coat and I give them something else or they take my money and I give them more money, that's fine, that's one thing. But when you come and threaten my life, then I have the right to defend my life because it is in the image of God that I have been made. And I also have the right to defend the lives of those for whom I have been given responsibility in my family and, uh, and, and those that are around me to whatever degree I can be their protector. I want to be their protector. I think Jesus summed it up in a, in a wonderful statement. He said, greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. It may cost me my life, but I will put my life on the line to protect the people that God has put in my care. So using discretion and wisdom as to how that is applied, certainly that's a challenge for a Christian. I'm asked occasionally, should, should Christians have guns as a, defensive, um, as a defensive tactic? I don't have a problem with that. Obviously you now have a, a weapon that can take a life and you, you have to make sure that you use it only in a way that protects the lives that you are responsible to care for. And uh, in that sense as the potential of those who do evil becomes more life-threatening, uh, sometimes the defenses have to become equally life-threatening. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm.